There aren't any credible long-term studies that show that being fat is unhealthy, but there is many that show that any attempt at weight loss will do great damage to your body's internal functions. Researching the Minnesota starvation experiment is a great start. You might want to read that first part again slowly because I'm fairly certain that being fat does not mean you get to live long-term. I'm fairly certain there are nobody that is 85 to 90 years old and 600 pounds. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video for the day. We're going back into r slash fat logic and if you guys would love to be absolutely amazing, show your support and to see more videos like this in the near future, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment down below to start some wholesome internet discussions and if you have not already, subscribe and turn on notifications. Also check out more videos in the playlist, the algorithm would appreciate it. Okie doga, let it go. You'll gain weight in your 20s, especially after 25. There is no reason for you to have the same body you had at 18, and it's not about self-control. Your body's filling out, so eat the cake, finish the pizza, die or drink the wine. Weight gain does not equal loss of value. No, it's actually quite the opposite. It's the increase of mass. Plus, also, I'm fairly certain there's some kind of thing with your cells once you turn 24 where they stop making new ones or that you basically become a full-fledged adult at the age of 24 or something like that, so any type of weight loss after the age of 24 is going to be a little harder than when you were 18. That is, a, that's, I think there's a study somewhere for that. It's easy to say losing weight won't make you happier if you haven't been overweight before or for a long time or felt the impediment of it or the self-generated disgust for it. No, getting in shape doesn't guarantee happiness, but it darn sure increases its measurability in most people. You can't simply lose weight and be in a perfect mental state. No, it's not the end all things to make your life better. Same thing with having materialistic things. What you do for yourself is what makes you have a better quality of life. If that means not talking to certain people because they always affect your mental health negatively or not doing a certain thing because you don't like doing it and has that effect on you, then so be it. You do what you do that makes you feel happy. Key part here being just you. If you feel like losing weight will help improve your mental state, then do it. If it's something you feel is good for you, then you do it. The fat activist movement goes against everything that I grew up with. I grew up in South Africa. Not the best country, but not the worst when it comes to, well, everything. It's got some of the most beautiful architecture, and it's got some of the biggest squalors. It's a land of contradiction. As a result, I grew up seeing both sides of human nutrition. My teachers were overweight, bordering on obese, but my fellow students sometimes didn't have lunch because their family didn't have any food. Even worse, I saw children my age without a family and without food begging near the squalor camps called Plakerskamp in Africans. Then there is the culture preaching fat acceptance. When I first read about it, I was absolutely horrified. Here is a demographic of people eating so much that they become overweight slash obese to the point that it's affecting their health negatively. And then they try to justify their excess weight by hiding behind the argument of F your social beauty standards. It's justifying gluttony, a luxury that most people don't have. A luxury that people are trying to justify in the face of people starving to death. Fat acceptance is a first world problem that insults third world suffering. This actually reminds me of a movie I've been really meaning to see and I've only seen clips of it through how to survive videos called The Platform. And essentially, like you can see in the title, there's that platform that gets lowered down and there is enough food on that platform to feed everybody in the prison, but because of greed and everything, there's barely any food on it halfway down, so some people all the way at the bottom don't go eating with anything for a month. It's kind of a graphic horror survival movie, so if you're not into any of that kind of stuff, it might not be for you, but it's an interesting concept nonetheless. Is there any real evidence that excess weight causes poorer outcomes from the virus? No. In order to prove that, first, you need to demonstrate that the correlation between the two is not down to chance, and the figures simply don't show this. It was listed as a pre-existing health condition that can get you a bump in the line for people waiting to get their vaccine. I'm 
fairly certain it's ex there's a correlation between the two because I had to list myself and I did qualify as obese in order to get the shot. People fail to understand that the idea of overeating runs parallel to manufactured scarcity, meaning you instill this fear in people and that they are over consuming, so they continuously blame themselves for the violence the symptom commits. Fat is natural too, by the way. Yeah, fat is natural. Every animal in existence has it, but having more fat than muscle is not. And I feel like part of the whole overeating thing ties to the whole thing that uh, healthy food costs rather much more than unhealthy food. Like you have the dollar menu, quarter pounders at McDonald's, or you can pay $5 and get a salad at your local Safeway or something like that. And just uh, if people want to save money and they still want a full meal, then yeah, they're obviously going to get the McDonald's if they want to save money. And it honestly kind of sucks that sometimes there are people that just can't afford to eat healthy. And in a lot of cases, the only thing that's really a healthy option compared to its unhealthy option that costs less on most of the times is water. People are incentivized to lose weight for no scientific reason, uh, just because they're told will make them healthier. This was often not true and prettier. Also false, there is no object judgment of what is pretty or not. Yeah, but when the doctor says, hey, yeah, you're not going to make it to 40, that's a bit of an incentive right there. And personally for me, it's for my own mental health. I liked having a chin and I also want to fit into my own super suits that I ordered a while back and I got them one size too small. At Diet Culture during the holiday season, Taylor's version, I guess Taylor Swift, you showing up even louder around the holidays is nothing new. You cause people to doubt their food choices, normalize diet talk, and commenting on people's bodies and plates, and sell people restrictive diets at the new year. I knew you were trouble, but since the last time you showed up, we've decided that you don't have a place at our holiday table anymore. This holiday season, and moving forward into 2022, everything has changed. We have decided that again and run from the messages in a bottle that you've told us. We've Remember the diet culture messages all do well, but they no longer have holy ground to stand on. We are never ever getting back together. Oh wait, no, the, yeah, this was supposed to be sung as some kind of Taylor Swift song. I don't know jack about Taylor Swift songs, except the only time I hear that there's a new song, it's usually about some dude she broke up with. And really, when it comes to the holiday season, yeah, sure, there's nothing wrong with having a holiday dinner with the family. That's perfectly fine. Just it's all about really controlling your portions. Like instead of having a whole metric ton of mashed potatoes, even though I know that sounds really fun. Um, it's not the best decision in the long run. Like, you can enjoy all the taste of all the holiday food. That's perfectly fine. Just pace yourself. Fat phobia red flags. Have you lost weight? You look great. OMG, you're eating again? I'm just concerned for your health. Should you be eating that? I'm just looking out for you. I just want you to be healthy. Jumping on this trend, so many red flags I could have included when it comes to fat phobia and diet culture. And for some reason, just listening the exact same stuff that was in the photo. Pretty much any comment a person makes about your weight slash body slash eating habits, unless overtly positive, are red flags. You mean like how the first one says you look great because you're deciding to do something with your body and it looks fantastic on you? Because I'm fairly certain telling somebody, hey, you did a good thing when you made that decision for yourself, keep on at it, is definitely not a red flag. The whole I'm concerned for your health, should you be eating that thing? Yeah, sometimes that can come off as a douchey move, but saying that somebody has lost weight and you look great doesn't exactly give off the red flag vibe. If someone you know has lost weight before they're winning, do not compliment the weight loss. Chances are that they probably got into that weight in an unhealthy way regardless of their body size. Stop celebrating people starving themselves for a day that is not about their body size. I know wedding dresses are both expensive and not elastic, so when you get measured for one, I think the main struggle is making sure you don't gain any weight so that you can still fit into it from the day you get fitted for it. I'm pretty certain people don't buy a wedding dress to make sure that they can lose weight before a wedding. Like, if I'm wrong, let me know, but I'm pretty certain people don't buy a wedding dress to make sure that they can slim down into it. They get measured for it, but it's the consistency that they gotta hold for it is the struggle, if any. Just found out I have fatty liver disease. I'm heck anti-diet, uh, but I'd rather not have the disease. 
any advice? Uh, yeah, one very obvious one, but, uh, you don't want to do it. And the fact that you didn't want to do it in the same sentence that you said you'd rather not have the disease kind of contradicts itself. Basically, you said you want the results that work for you, but you don't want to have to work for the results that will work for you. Hey, gang, oh, let's talk about my encounter with medical fat phobia today. I had a consultation with a sleep doctor this morning, part of the hoop jumping for my new insurance so I can get a new machine. After going over some details, answering some questions, and having it confirmed that I do indeed have a deviated septum and possibly a chronic nasal inflammation. The doc, a white boomer woman who was super slender, starts talking to me about losing weight. Because it helps, was her comment, and her first question wasn't, how active are you? How much are you eating? No, it was, can you eat less? Can I eat less? Something I have heard plenty through my life. Just eat less, and always with zero prior knowledge of me. I replied, not in a healthy way, which stumped her a moment. She gave me a confused look, so I added, I've been lifting weights most of the year. She liked that and asked how much weight I had lost. I told her I haven't. I've just replaced fat with muscle, gears grinding. Once the hamster got back on the wheel, she recommended that I see if Morton has a nutritionist or can refer me to one, because maybe you'll learn something helpful. Again, no questions of my diet. After that, we finished up and I got prescribed a new sleep study. Still so effing wild to me that doctors will so casually tell fat folks to get an eating disorder. I know she wanted me to restrict to 1200 calories a day. I could see it in her eyes. And it's hilarious that muscle weighs more than fat, except when you are still fat. It's the casual way it happens that hits me anymore, and how I just have to smile and nod for the most part because if I, who has done my best to learn more about my body slash fat science, try to call out the BS, I might be labeled non-compliant and not get what I need. And it's especially wild in an effing sleep lab where they are treating sleep apnea whose symptoms include fat retention slash gain because your body is stressed the F out and trying to keep you alive and my body composition has been changing from lifting saggy everywhere now. I could flex at her and show solid effing muscle, but it doesn't matter because I still have a big belly. But hey, maybe the new study will reveal new facts and I can get a new machine with new settings and slash or maybe I'll end up having no surgery and start sleeping better. But also, regardless of what my body does, there are worse things than being fat and most doctors just need to shut up about fatness because they are operating on outdated ideas and info. F this S. Yeah, you know, because why would the person who knows how the body works know well more than you? If you said that fat got replaced with muscle, then show any definition at any point in time just by a subtle flex and not have it be that your muscle jiggles two seconds after you stop moving. Because that's not muscle, I can guarantee you that. Plus also, uh, you do realize that you need proper sleep, good diet, and exercise, a combination of all three in order to actually lose weight properly. Uh, you can't just have a bad sleep schedule and eat junk food every single day but think you're going to make progress because you go to the gym every day for two hours. Even if you have a sports car, if you put crap gas in it, it's not going to run properly. But with that, that is going to have to be it with the video. If you guys would love to be absolutely amazing, show your support, and see more videos like this in the near future, be sure to hit that like button leave a comment down below to start up the wholesome internet discussions and if you have not already subscribe and turn on notifications also check out more videos in the playlist the algorithm would absolutely appreciate it and i would too i'll be sure to see you guys in the next one thank you so much for watching and uh, bye bye